Alright, so now we're going to be start working on that base plate. Um, and here you can see, so in this we're also going to be using that 3D printed part I mentioned in the uh, parts list. I'm going to be installing that along with the extra washers and screws that I have to help install that, the flight board, and that base plate. So to start off, we're going to start working on the flight controller and oh, also the rubber gasket uh, gummies, which is actually what we're going to start with. So you're going to get your flight controller the four and four of the gummies, and you're going to take the gummies. Here's a close-up of them. This is what you're looking for. They're clear, kind of hard to see. You're going to need to insert them one into each corner as so with the small part being on the same side as the uh, soldering pieces and all of that. Make sure that bigger section of the gummy you saw in the previous picture is on the bottom that's going to be touching the 3D printed part. All right, okay, here you go. Here's another picture. This is what it'll look like. This is the top where your smaller section of the gummy will be on with all of your soldering board as well as the other parts and plugs of the flight controller. Next, you will take your 3D printed part, and with it, the four longer black screws that came with it. Um, I think they ate, yeah. And you're going to start off by running those. So this is the indented portion. You can kind of tell by which side is up and down on this one as the protrusion goes on the bottom where the screws will go. That way it helps will leave room so that you can actually get your screw your board into the base plate. You'll need that little bit of extra space as well as your flight controller will sit inside of that recess. So make sure that the recess is on the same side as those hex washers you're putting in. And you're, so you're going to put the four bolts in along with a washer on each one and kind of just cinch them up tight using that uh, screwdriver. You'll need that socket screwdriver that we talked about at the beginning. Uh, you can I used my fingers in this picture to kind of give a better example. I'd recommend using just a socket wrench to hold that in while you tighten it. So once you've got all four tightened, you'll then proceed to put um, the screws through the inner holes of that recess. This will um, just kind of help uh, hold it to that baseboard as you'll see in the next image here. Once you get those four in, you can kind of see at the bottom of the picture here, right there, that is going to be a washer and that uh, screw you just added. So you'll need four of those, as you can see in the previous picture. Get your four screws, four washers, uh, I mean nuts, and again, tying it using your um, screwdriver, sorry, and the socket. And after you've attached it to the board, then continue by adding the flight controller module on top. The gummy should just slide onto the different screws that you, the black screws you inserted at the beginning. So make sure you attach it to the board first because once the flight <laughs> controller is on, it is going to be substantially harder to tighten that onto your board. Oh, sorry, those were out of order. Here you go. This one was supposed to be showing it attached to the flight board with those silver screws and then sliding the flight controller on. And here is a close up. These are the lock nuts you will be using. They have this, I, they come with the silicone lock on the top there. So there you go, once you attach it, this is what the bottom will look like. Better angle, that one picture was just out of order. There you go. Once the, yeah, so once you got the board attached, then you can slide the flight controller onto, onto the black screws. And once those are ready, you should be attached the 3D printed piece to your baseboard you slide on the flight controller, flight controller sitting on top, and then you will add your last four 
lock nuts to the top, being careful not to squish the gummies. You want it tight, enough that it's locking, but you don't want to compress your gummies like pancakes because they will. They're meant to give as they are to help ensure that your flight controller is getting the most accurate readings and that the vibrations and movements of the drone are not affecting its readings. So make them snug, but not an, um, you don't want to squish them that they don't do their job anymore. Hey, so this next part we're going to move on to is soldering. All right, so um, to, before we get started, if you look over in this picture I have posted, this is going to be the soldering iron that I choose to use. Um, it's part of that kit I showed you at the beginning, the newbie drone kit. It's got some pretty much all of the tools you'll need throughout this project. Um, anyways, moving on. So along with that, you will need some uh, the soldering soldering tool, as well as some wires as we're going to be connecting the. ESCs from, that connected to our motors. We're going to run them down and we're going to have to splice and extend the wires of that ESC so that they can reach our flight controller. As well as we're going to connect a capacitor that came with uh, the drone that was in the, uh, within the, in the box in one of those bags and some wires that are going to be connected to an XT60 connector as well as uh, one male Futaba end with three female pins going inside of that that we're going to be using to connect our receiver to our flight controller. But we'll get to all of that as we progress. To start off, we're going to focus on the ESCs. And so with those, we're going to be using 18 gauge wire for those splices. And you shouldn't need very much to get it to that uh, the length you need. Um, probably grab like 10 inches worth of wire of your black and 10 inches of black and 10 inches of red. That way you have roughly the two inches because you'll need about two to three inches on each one in order for it to reach. Here's my final one. I don't know if you can really see it. I'm going to pull this wire through. So you can see right here, this is where my splice was. I have then put it in that heat wrap, uh, heat shrink. Let's see. And all you need is from here over to the flight controller. So not very much. Like I said, it's going to be about two inches. That way, with the 10 to 12 inches of wire that you grab of each color, you have a little bit extra in case you make any mistakes along the way. So that's what we're going to start with. Um, as you can see in the picture, get that pulled back up. Um, I, my preference was I did this after I had connected my arms to the base plate, and that is so I knew exactly how far away uh, the splice needed to be. And you don't want it to be super tight. If it's got a little bit of slack, that's fine. That's something you can fix by putting some zip ties to really cinch those wires up to the arm. So make sure it's it's got a little bit of wiggle room there. See, that's, that's going to be a lot easier to work with. Um, I have this one that's like the perfect length, and so it's already really tight. And it's more of a, uh, an inconvenience, I can say, from experience. So go ahead and get your soldering ready, and we're going to go ahead, and once you get that 12-gauge wire, you're going to have to solder and connect, oops, there we go, solder and connect those little extenders to your ESC wires, so strip those to help get them prepped, intertwine the wires and then solder them together. And then you'll want to put some heat shrink on that. As you saw, tighten that up, cover it, make it look nice, and keep it safe and avoid any kind of issues in the future by protecting that properly. And you'll go through and do that for all eight of them because you'll have positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, all 
Sorry, positive and negative all the way around the drone. And get all of those spliced. Once you get those spliced, then you'll start connecting them. Make sure that your ESC, the capacitor, is going to connect to the front of our flight controller. The front is the opposite end of where the plug-in is for uh, the US, the micro SD card as well as your micro USB port. The capacitor is going to go on this far side, which is where we're going to end up connecting the battery. So from there, once that you've found that this is the front, installed your ESC in that manner. Um, you can then, when you're looking at the corners from the outside, like have this arm, whenever one of the arms is facing you, then you know that positive always goes on the right and negative goes on the left all the way around for every arm is going to be the same. So go ahead, get soldering, and then we'll proceed to the next portion of soldering. So now that you've connected all of your ESCs, you've extended those wires, and then connected the positive wire, which is generally red, that's how I did it, was red, on the right-hand side with the clean soldering right there, and your negative on the left all the way around, we can then proceed to the signal wire. So if you remember on your ESCs, they had a black and yellow wire that were intertwined into a Futaba connector. We're going to go ahead, it's going to be much longer than you need. So again, you're gonna kind of measure it out, hold it to the flight controller, get a good estimate of how long it needs to be. You're gonna have to cut it down to size, cut that Futaba off, and you can remove the black wire now. I just cut it flush with the ESC module so that all you have left is this yellow wire. That's all you'll need from the signal. As we're gonna come in here, and when you look, all right, in every corner, you can see my yellow wire is connected on the same node all the way around. That's what we're going to proceed to solder next. We're going to then connect our signal wire to that S pad. It's going to be the one next to what you were uh, on the left hand side of that nut near your negative connector. So we're going to solder that yellow wire. Get a little closer there for you. So that is going to be where our negative wire comes in. Here, we'll show this one. It's a little clearer. That's our negative wire right there. So our yellow wire is going to be connected into the little circle connector port uh, soldering point right there. It should be S, and they are numbered 1, 2, 3, 4. So into that S port. You can just do a small dab of solder to connect that there. Once you've done that, your ESCs should be good to go. Hopefully you have them all connected at this point as we can then proceed to connecting our XT60 and to our 18 gauge wire.